Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to introduce a digital circuit that's related to a flip-flop, and it's called a one-shot. And unlike a flip-flop, which has two stable states where you have uh, two outputs, Q and Q0, and if Q is zero, Q0 is one, and if Q is one, Q0 is zero, and it remembers that uh, state, this has a quasi stable state and what I mean is that it has a stable state say for by default Q is 0 and Q naught is equal to 1. Well it has a quasi stable state where Q will equal to 1 and Q naught will equal to 0 for a period of time that is determined by an RC time constant. So it'll switch to that position once uh, an input is triggered. It has a trigger input that changes the state from the normal output condition to an opposite output condition that lasts for a specific period of time determined by an RC time constant. And then it will switch back to the stable default state until it's triggered again. So a one-shot has a stable state and a quasi-stable state determined by an RC time constant. So let me elaborate on that. So here's a one-shot and let's say that the uh, normal output for this is Q equal to zero and Q naught equal to 1. So for the normal output, Q is, is, Q is equal to 0, Q naught is equal to 1. For the quasi stable output, say this is time t, when we have a positive, on this case let's say it's a positive pulse, we have a positive pulse that comes in and triggers this. This Q will switch over to, so at some time, say right here, we get the trigger. You see that? What happens is Q will switch over to this quasi-stable state. We'll call this 5 volts or uh, logic uh, 1. And once for, for a certain period of time determined by an RC time constant. And then once that period of time is ended, it'll switch back to the, the normal stable state until it is triggered again. So this period of time here is the RC time constant. And this is the one shot abbreviated OS. So I've added a one shot to the uh, binary counter I built in a previous video and what I've added is a 100 microfarad capacitor so C is equal to 100 microfarads and I have a resistor that's 150 K ohms so this is 100 times 10 to the minus 6 farads times 150 thousand ohms. So if I multiply uh, these two together, I get 15 seconds. So the pulse width is going to be 15 seconds. In addition, what I've done is I have a gate, an AND gate, and I have connected to one input, I have a clock pulse. And the other input is connected to the output uh, the one shot output 
which is that timed pulse. And if you think about it, what that does is an AND gate produces a high output when only the inputs are high. So in essence, this uh, is a gateway that allows me to determine if this square wave gets through. So if this is high, the square wave will be able to go through the AND gate for this period of time t. So in essence now I can count for a certain period of time. So this AND gate output then goes to uh, an input to those flip-flops that I have. It's a binary counter. And it'll, it will count for this period of time determined by the RC time constant. And then once this goes low, once this is zero, this is this uh, train of pulses or well, these clock pulses will uh, be prevented from going through the AND gate. So it will stop counting. So let me get the Heath kit trainer and then I'll just show you the circuit in operation. So here I've added a 74121, which is a one shot. And here is just the uh, 7408 AND gate. So if we look real quick at the pinout from the Texas Instruments TTL data book, we can see the pinout here for the 74121. And you can see there there are a couple of inputs. They're not they're not just uh, a trigger input. We have inputs uh, that we can determine uh, the Q output uh, to remain at, and also whether or not we want uh, Q output. Uh, to trigger in a quasi state uh, at a logic one level or have it stay at a one level and then go to a zero level and we could change that it has three inputs a one a two and then the B is the trigger input and usually the case uh, what they have is an internal resistor that you can utilize so you only have to attach the capacitor but you're limited by the uh, pulse width that you can uh, obtain with the 2k resistor or the uh, duration of the uh, quasi stable state uh, so this is a 2k internal resistor that you can use but you can bypass that and apply an external resistor along with the external uh, capacitor to get uh, longer on times or a longer pulse width and they give you uh, the pinout that you do to approve that uh, to achieve that it says here to use the internal timing resistor connect our internal pin to VCC for improved pulse width accuracy and repeatability connect an external resistor between our external slash C external and VCC with V internal open circuited so you would not uh, connect anything to R internal if you're using an external resistor and that's what I did so here we have the uh, 74121 has an internal uh, resistor of 2k and the L121 has an internal resistor of 4k and here's the function table that tells you what uh, to apply to A, 1, 2, and B in order to achieve these different combinations of um, quasi-stable outputs on Q and Q0. And you can see here part of the makeup of a one-shot is a Schmidt trigger. So this is the trigger right here and when I trigger the one shot it will start counting and it should stop around 15 seconds 
see, and it, it has stopped. So I can get it to count again by triggering it. And you can see it's counting again. It, it doesn't start uh, from zero. And then it stopped. Now, once you trigger a one shot, if it, re if it receives more triggers while it's already been triggered, uh, they don't matter. It ignores that and it will uh, count, uh, the, the, the pulse will last for the uh, duration of the RC time constant and it'll ignore any other triggers that, it's, that are occurring until it goes back to its normal state. So once I trigger this, I can keep on triggering, it's just going to keep on um, counting until that pulse goes back to or terminates and goes back to the uh, normal Q output, which is zero. Now, I, I brought this up in, a, in another video. I can have this count from zero. Uh, another um, control line that you have on flip-flops are preset or clear. So I have a clear hooked up here to the flip-flops. So I am able to clear this and set this back to zero by giving it a momentary pulse. Uh, preset and clears are usually just DC signals so if I was to put a constant uh, high on the uh, clear here for this for these flip-flops it would remain there and ignore all other inputs but I'm just giving it a momentary pulse to clear. So let's go ahead we'll count this again. Now depending on the tolerances of the capacitor and the 150k resistor, it's not going to be exactly uh, 15 seconds. We got a stopwatch here, and if we so, let me trigger this. So it's about 12 seconds for this particular combination RC time constant. Now I have the output of the one shot connected to the scope so let's take a look at that pulse. So you can see here the output of the one shot or the stable output and the normal output is uh, Q equal to zero and when I trigger it goes to 5 volts and it will remain there for about 12 seconds and then it goes low again and that low on the AND gate prevents the clock pulse on the other input of the AND gate from passing through uh, which then goes to the flip-flops uh, that I have set up as a binary counter. So in essence I'm able to count in binary uh, for a set period of time determined by the RT or uh, the RC time constant of the one shot. So here I'm looking at the output of the AND gate and you can and I've increased the frequency to one kilohertz so we can see it and the one kilohertz on the output uh, passes through from the input as long as the other input is high. So let me trigger this You can see one of the inputs is high and allows the clock signal to pass through the AND gate feeding the flip-flops and then when the input goes to zero uh, the output is zero. The clock is prevented from uh, going through the AND gate. So since I've determined from the stopwatch that this counts for 12 seconds uh, it should count up to 12 in binary. So let me clear this. It's cleared and then let me trigger the one shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
And the reason that's accurate, or that accuracy is going to depend on the accuracy, of course, of the clock from the Digital Heath Kit Trainer, which I have set at 1 hertz. So in fact, it did count up to binary 12. One of the reasons I brought up the one shot is I recently changed an outside uh, light that has a sensor on it, motion sensor, and also uh, it has a selection switch here for the on time. And what happened is this no longer reliably would sense motion for some reason. Uh, it was over. It was uh, under an overhang, so I don't know the weather didn't get to it. But you can see here the on time. This probably selects a different combination of resistor. And this here has the sense uh, minimum and maximum uh, distance for sensing motion. But this has a lot of, uh, looks like a lot of salvageable parts on it, like this ceramic uh, bulb socket here, or light socket. And it has a couple of supports there that just screwed onto this fixture. And these switches here, I like to see what's in here, but I wonder why this is intermittent. It does have a lens here. Um, maybe the lens just um, got opaque or uh, with uh, exposure to sun. I don't know. This lasted a good amount of time. I was surprised. Must be a kind of a re reliable design because they still carry this light fixture, even though this is, I don't know, about eight years old, I think. Uh, they still carry the same one. So I was thinking of taking this apart. Take a look inside. So there's some screws on the back here, a couple of Phillips screws. So I don't know if I'm just not trying hard enough. This, this panel doesn't seem to want to go anywhere once those screws are removed. But I did see that there is a screw underneath the light socket here. I have to remove the bracket that holds the light socket. Oh, so that just came off. Huh, this is just, I thought the circuit board was going to be underneath here. I thought, I was wondering whether or not there was a, a round contact that um, you just made a physical connection to, but it's just, it's wires. So here's the photo sensor, or the motion sensor. I can't see anything going wrong, with, I don't know. Oh no, there, there's two screws right here. Okay. So this might be something that could use in a project also. There's this base here that the photo sensor or the motion sensor connects to. So that just comes off like that. You have to cut the wires. They have a hole. So have some epoxy there. I don't see any weather getting into this, so I wonder if the in intermittent problem is because of something on the circuit board that evidently is behind here. Um, I wonder how that comes off. So it looks like what I have to do is just go in there and force this plate off. It does seem to want to give. Got all the screws out. It's not like I want to salvage this or uh, reuse it. So there must be some tabs in here that it's pressed into. So I'm probably going to crack this. Unless they put a little glue there also. Yeah, so I think they glued it also. So I'm trying to break this off here. There's the circuit boards. So of course this is powered with AC, so there must be a, a step-down transformer there and a little bridge rectifier. There's the relay. So that's, so you get some good parts in here. Here's, here's a relay, a little circuit board that has the looks, full bridge rectifier on there, it looks like. And another circuit board, looks like that's removable. There's a couple of screws in there. So you can see here, this is the AC side here, 
um, and a power supply that supplies the DC voltage. This here rectifies the AC and supplies the DC voltages to this board here. And this looks like a custom little IC with some epoxy dab to it. This is probably the one shot and it's on this little circuit board here. The circuit board actually has a date on it also 2004. So this is the switch here for controlling the on time and this switch here uh, controlled the uh, sense distance how uh, sensitive uh, the uh, I think it was like an infrared motion sensor I'm not certain but this is just a custom board they have a part number for the board so I can't really see um, a part number for it says IC1 but here's a relay so this relay here receives a logic uh, level that determines that energizes this to turn the light on um, so you've got the AC input and then the AC gets applied to uh, the light when this relay gets activated So there's a full bridge rectifier in here. So I might cut out this uh, this motion sensor and see if that works with the Arduino. But this just gives you uh, an idea of one of the uses of how they would use a one shot and this switch here just switches in different resistor values. They're probably these three resistors right here to um, change the RC time constant for how long you want this relay activated to keep the light on when it receives a trigger from the motion sensor. So that's an explanation of a one shot digital circuit with a demonstration um, circuit on the digital Heathkit trainer and also a quick tear down of an outside light that I recently replaced and uh, how they go about using a one-shot uh, in that application for uh, being able to adjust the on time for an outside light with a motion sensor on it. So I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to like, subscribe, and or comment. Thanks for watching.